Welcome to another edition of Mudcats on Deck from Five County Stadium. I'm Darren Hedrick with you, and we've got a loaded show for you this afternoon because today we're talking with reliever Sean Armstrong. He's had a terrific year so far for the Carolina Mudcats. He's allowed only two runs in 25 innings. We'll talk to him about his biggest key to success and also about pitching for East Carolina University. The Pirates were just announced as a number two seed in the Chapel Hill bracket in the NCAA College World Series uh, tournament. So we'll talk to Sean about that. We also talked with Tony Walters, the infielder for the Carolina Mudcats, was announced as the Indians Player of the Week for the week of May 21st. We'll talk to Tony about his terrific month and also about having some family in town and what it's like to be one of the younger players on this team and playing for manager Edwin Rodriguez. So we'll have Tony Walters on the program with us. We'll also take a look at the top 10 plays for the Carolina Mudcats and we'll tell you about some upcoming events at Five County Stadium as well. Stick around, we've got more coming up on Mudcats on Deck. Welcome back to Mudcats on Deck from Five County Stadium. Darren Hedrick with you, and we're joined by reliever Sean Armstrong, who is a Newburn, North Carolina native. And Sean, you went to East Carolina University. Now you're here with the Carolina Mudcats and in the Indian system. Started the year with Lake County. What was it like when you got the call that said, "Hey, you're basically going home to pitch professional baseball in Carolina"? Well, it was not. It was awesome, but the best thing was I was only there for six games in Lake yeah. County. And I mean, I, I heard the news that I was coming here before spring training broke, which didn't end up happening, which I'm glad I went to Lake County. But getting the call to come here is nothing better being 45 minutes from home, 45 minutes from school. Well, how I know your teammates at ECU are still playing in season right now. As a matter of fact, they just found out where they're going in the tournament. We'll get to that in a moment. But have you had a lot of friends and family come out to the ballpark so far when you've pitched? Yeah, I've had several. I mean, I'll have 12 tickets on the list at times, and guys are like, why 12 tickets? I said, well, I got a lot of family close to me. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, a bunch of them have been here, and I'm glad to have them here. Pitching for East Carolina collegiately, uh, what was that like, basically being in your backyard to pitch college ball, too? It was awesome. Um, I mean, I always grew up a Pirate fan. That's always where I wanted to go, to there in UNC. And whenever Billy Goblin made me an offer to go to school there, I was absolutely. <laughs> and my parents were excited because I knew they could come every weekend, and it was far enough away from home where I could be away from home. But at the same time, it was close enough to where they could come see me play. I know you've got a lot of friends still on that team. Uh, number two seed in the tournament. They're going yeah. to Chapel Hill to play. Uh, I know you've got a responsibility with your own career right now, but are you going to try it all to make a game? or? I would love to if we weren't going to be in Winston-Salem. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm going to definitely be cheering for them, watching them on the Internet and everything every chance I get. I'm surprised they got a two seed. I hope they go in there and beat St. John's on Friday <laughs> at 1 o'clock and then take care of UNC on Saturday. Do you have any special memories of playing like maybe an NC State or a UNC or any in-state rivalry? Um, well, honestly, my special memory would probably be whenever I was a red shirt sitting in the stands and we were playing South Carolina down 9-2 to two, going into the seventh and coming back and winning 10-9 to nine wow. with no pitching whatsoever left over, having to beat them twice. That's probably the most memorable wow. moment of my career. That had to be a special moment. And now you're making your own here with the, the Mudcats and the Indian system again. And, had a really strong start to the year, only two runs through 25 innings. What's been working so well for you against hitters? Honestly, it's been mostly just Dave Miller, Harry, and Erickson 
just telling me just focus on throwing a strike zone. Don't give yeah. them too much credit. I mean, they're hitters, they're human just like you are, so throw it down the middle and let them try and hit it. And that's what I've been trying to do for the most part because, honestly, in college, I struggled with the strike zone a little bit. <laughs> I was a little bit wild. But I guess fastball, cutter, curveball, and change-ups mostly the yeah. biggest things that's been working for me. Fastball is top to 103 on the stadium gun here at Five County Stadium. How about your command? How do you feel about the control of, of such a powerful fastball? I, mean, I definitely feel good about it, <laughs> especially with the change of my mechanics ever since I came with the Indians because they've changed a lot from a short, taking me from a long arm swing to a short arm swing. And, it's helped me with control with all four pitches. Now you're one of those guys, you start with an over-the-head wind, you come over the top in your delivery. How does that help you in terms of your timing and, and make everything flow as you make your delivery to home plate? It's helped me with getting my hands to the zone versus staying in one solid motion until I break to go to the plate. That's the biggest thing with me. All right, well, we've got a baseball here, and you mentioned you have a cutter. Most fans are probably wondering how you grip a cutter compared to most pitches. Yeah. If you would, just show us what a cutter looks like when it's leaving your hand. How do you grip it? Well, there's a lot of different ways, but I like to hold it really loose because I'm trying to throw it hard, and I just grip it right on top of the seams like that. And just when I get out in front, just let the ball <clears throat> take care of itself coming out of my hand. As you can't, if you get on the side of it too much, it's more like a slider, and I tend to do that a lot of times when I'm ahead in the count to try and get five different pitches. But it's more or less just let your fingers do the work because it's out in front of your hand. Yeah. As a pitcher, how important is, are the grips for you? I know with knuckleballs, you always hear about guys carrying nail files to keep their yeah. nails a certain way because they have to dig into the hide. But for you, what's it like with the grip on whether it's a cutter or a curveball? How important is that for you? It's more or less about feel with all pitchers because you can go down and ask any of our guys on the team, and they're all probably going to be similar but different pitches. Like my cutter, I hold it on the seams, and my curveball, I hold it across the seams. It's just it feels better to me, and I like to get the rotation to more like a four-seam fastball when I throw my curveball so it looks similar coming out of my hand. What's one pitch that you're trying to work on right now and really hone? Probably my changeup, definitely. So, I mean, changeup's one of the best pitches in baseball because it comes out of your hand just like a fastball and comes in like a fastball, but yeah. I have a little bit of control issues with it, so. Well, I mean, if you're throwing 100 on a fastball, if you've got a changeup that you can drop 20 mile an hour off of, a hitter's got no chance. Yeah, well, <laughs> I gotta get it for a strike first. <laughs> Be able to throw it 60 feet, because I have a problem with throwing it about 50 feet. Yeah. So. Well, well, Sean, you've had a great start to your career here with Carolina, and we hope to see it going, and uh, I'm going up to the next level here pretty soon. Absolutely. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. And Sean Armstrong, a reliever for the Carolina Mudcats. We'll be back with more Mudcats on deck in just a moment. in the air towards right field. Moncrief racing on. This one dropping quickly. The right fielder under it in the bullpen. Reaching out, he makes the catch. Here's a swing and a deep drive by Walters towards right field. It's sailing towards the wall. It is gone! Tony Walters has just homered for the Mudcats. His first of the year. run game who knows here's a swing and a ground ball to short Walters underhand toss to second one turn to first two this one three deficit here's a swing and a line drive taken by Rodriguez on one hop throw to first got him what a play by Ronnie First 
pitch and drives it to deep center field. Tyler Holt going back to the warning track and on the run, reaching up. He does make the catch. Tyler Holt runs that ball down and dead away center just shy of the wall. And the inning is over. What a play for the center fielder. On deck, Darren Hedrick with you at Five County Stadium, and we're pleased to be joined by Tony Walters, an infielder for the Carolina Mudcats. And Tony, this year you've been at shortstop, you've been at second base, trying to learn both positions. How's that been so far this year? Oh, it's been good. It's been good. It's uh, just uh, it's um, going back to both positions, just different angles, and I'm just learning the second base position. I'm a little more comfortable shortstop, but um, second base is an awesome position yeah. too, and uh, just getting used to the different angles of balls. And, Playing batters in different areas, I've never been on that side of the the field, and um, just, it's it's a challenge, but um, it's it's a great position. I love playing on the side with Ronnie and uh, Justin Tool and Tyler Cannon. It's it's a lot of fun. Have you ever caught yourself maybe on a double play ground ball if you're playing it short, wanting to go to your right instead of your left after switching positions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. I have a couple times. We've seen that out there. So. <laughs> But, um, you know, I'm learning, and uh, those mistakes, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to make them again, so I'm just learning from those mistakes and gaining from them. Well, you and Ronnie have combined on a lot of really nice plays defensively this year. How fun is it working with him with all the range and the talent he has? Oh, it's, it's a lot of fun. He's, he's a really good player, and um, it's, it's, it's a blast. You know, I've never, never had such consistency with a good player like that before, and uh, it's awesome turning double plays yeah. and love throwing around on his strikeouts and throwing around fast and yeah. it's a lot of fun. He's he's a really good guy and um, learn a lot from him just watching him. Let's talk about your hitting. You hit your first home run of the season against the Wilmington Blue Rocks and a pretty special moment. Your parents were in town. They were able to see it. How cool was that? Oh, it was awesome. It felt great. Barely felt it, but it felt great. <laughs> and I didn't even know it was a home run. I turned around second, running my hardest, and everyone tells me it's a home run and I start jogging from third to home. But um, felt really good. I loved that my parents were here to see that and uh, hopefully it's not my, my first and hopefully it's not my last. Right. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. Well, did you get the ball? Yep, got the ball. <laughs> and, uh, Danny Salazar threw it to my dad and uh, That's it, cool. yeah, so I got to sign it last night and my grandparents probably have it now. So That's great, yeah. man. That's great. Well, you've had an outstanding month of May at the plate. What's been the biggest difference for you? Um, I think uh, just working with uh, Tuck and Edwin and just uh, trying to slow the game down and just uh, see the ball, hit the ball, keep it simple, and um, just relax and not try to do too much and uh, just play the game of baseball and try to yeah. make people around me better and just focus on getting jobs done. And I'm trying to do that. I'm still trying to do that and uh, try my best and uh, I'm going to make it happen. So, Working with Edwin Rodriguez this summer, the manager for the Mudcats, how fun has that been? What's he like to work with? Uh, he's, he's awesome. You learn so much from him. And... Uh, Everything I've learned from him, I've tried to, I've tried to do it the next day, and it's hard. But he knows so much that it's just, it's yeah. unreal. Like I've, I felt from a baseball player from the beginning of the season to now, like I've changed, and uh, it, he, 
he's he's an inspiration to all these guys on the team, yeah. myself included, and uh, it's just awesome. He he's a great guy, very relaxed, and makes us feel like yeah, this is a game. It's not just our job, you know. We're our job is to play this game, and it's a game, yeah. and it's awesome. And uh, he always uh, wants us to be in the moment and uh, don't take anything for granted. Well, obviously he's the manager, and that itself carries respect, but. At times, it seems like he can be a father figure for you guys, and that's got to help you out, too. I mean, being far from home, you were born and raised in California. Now here you are out in Zebulon, North Carolina. And i got to think having a, a guy that you can turn to to talk about more than just baseball has to be a big help. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. He always jokes around with me day in and day out. <laughs> never stops, but, um, yeah, he, I could take him as a father figure for sure, and I've, uh, I look up to him. I look up to a lot of these guys on this team. Uh, Scooter Tucker, he, I look up to him so much, and uh, they, they just they teach us so much, and they, they go out of the way to teach us, and it, I, I'm really blessed to have them around. Justin Toole, you mentioned him. He's a, an older player on this team, and he's been to AAA even at times. Uh, what's it like to have him as a teammate and another guy that you can turn to if you just need some advice? Yeah, I, I have him 24-7. He's my roommate, <laughs> and uh, we get on each other, but he, uh, we always talk, and I really can he can um, really teach me things, not just on the baseball field, but just being a, a person in general. And uh, he uh, he's just a great person and a great friend for me and a new friend that I've gained and from this game of baseball. And it's awesome, the people you meet in baseball. Yeah. How do you like the Carolina League so far? We've been to all the stops around the league now. How do you like it? Oh, it's it's awesome. It's, it's, com we, it's competing. It's really hard, but I'm just... Uh, trying to slow the game down and um, all the pitchers you see day in and day out pitchers are on target they're good and uh, haven't seen that before and uh, <laughs> um, it's tough and uh, I try to tell myself I, I can do it and I can and just uh, just uh, learning it's a yeah. big learning experience. Is there any particular park outside of Five County Stadium you like so far playing at? Um, I think I think Salem because I had a, a friend on there or uh, Winston-Salem yeah. those two fields are really nice and uh, had a good good experience, and I, I didn't get to play on Salem's Field, but I really liked the field yeah. when I walked on it and yeah. everything. But um, next time we play there, I'm really excited to play there. Well, Tony, keep up the good work, man. An outstanding month of May. Thanks for being with us. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's Tony Walters, infielder for the Mudcats. We'll be back with more Mudcats on deck in just a moment. As always, we invite you to follow the Mudcats online through carolinamudcats.com. And if you visit our website, make sure you vote for Muddy the Mascot as the best in minor league baseball. That's carolinamudcats.com. And make sure to follow us for all the updates on Facebook and Twitter. Also, fans, the All-Star Game is coming up on June 19th in Winston-Salem at BB&T Ballpark. The best of the Carolina League will square off against the best of the California League in the All-Star Game. And again, that's June 19th at BB&T Ballpark in Winston-Salem. And that's it for this week's edition of Mudcats on Deck. Check back with us throughout the summer for more updates from Five County Stadium. We'll see you next time on Mudcats on Deck.